we added 11. From 26 to 37, we added 11. 37 to 48, we added 11. 11 again, and then you check and make sure you see there's ones on this side. So our rate of change in the table is 11 over 1. So we're writing y equals. This would be our m and then x. But 11 over 1, remember, over 1, 11 is the rate of change. Um, and then, so in that case, what I would do the most easily is just work backwards. So instead of adding 11, I'm now going to subtract 11 from 15, which would give me 4. So then we would add a plus 4 at the end. So our best answer should be C. You could also obviously put in your L1, L2 in your calculator or in Desmos and then get a linear regression. And remember to input in Desmos to get your linear regression, it's Y sub 1 about MX sub 1 plus B after you fill in the table. Um, guys, if you have a question, by the way, I'm working on one computer screen right now, so I can't, without making this really small, I won't be able to read it. So if you need to make some racket and I'll go check it, okay? So this is a really good question. Um, it's probably more math level one versus math eight in our statistics, like so our mean, median, mode. Abby scored these grades on her first four history quizzes. What score does Abby need to get on her fifth quiz to have an average of exactly 91 on her history quizzes? So remember, average is taking the sum of all terms, add them all together, and then divide by number of terms present and that is your average so in this case normally we would just add them all together divide by the total number there and then we get out the average but this is one of those things where we're given the average that we want so this can become a 91 we can add all these up so 87 plus 93 plus 96 plus 90 89 sorry let me dig out my calculator real quick so 87 plus 93 plus 96 plus 89, which gives us 365. And then it's plus one more. So sum of terms is 365 plus something. The number of terms, it tells us there's five, right, when we're done. So this is going to become a five. So it's 365 plus one more grade divided by 5 would give us 91. I'm going to pause for a second and give you a minute to solve for x. So algebraically, we're going to multiply both sides by 5, and that's going to give us 365 plus x equals 455. We want to get x by itself, so we're going to subtract 365 from both sides, and so x equals 90. x equals 90. Um, I'm going to try split this because I don't like that I can't see you guys. Good job, Logan. Is that too small for you to see the questions and the problems in my work? Or are we okay if I do it this way so that way I can see if you guys have questions as well? All right, cool. As long as you can read it, I'm good. All right, excellent, excellent. That way then we can communicate some more. All right, so write the equation of a line passing through the point 1, negative 10 is perpendicular to the given equation. So as we discussed before, what do we know about perpendicular lines if we're writing equations? What do we know? What, what should we be thinking about for perpendicular? You might remember? Yep, opposite and what else? They do opposite and reciprocal. Good. Reciprocal. And they do intersect at 90 degrees. So lots of good stuff over there in the chat box. So opposite reciprocal means if it was positive, it becomes negative, And then it has to flip because reciprocal, remember, is flipped. 
intersect at 90 degrees is the definition of perpendicular and the opposite reciprocal is referring to our slope. So if we take our slope of our equation given, what is the opposite and reciprocal of negative one third? So I need the opposite and I need to flip it. So that's going to give me what? Close. That is definitely reciprocal. Yeah, good. It needs to flip and not no longer be negative. Since it is negative now, it's going to, if you do it in each step, so this would be opposite and then this would be flipped. So this is your opposite. This is your reciprocal if you did it step by step. So we're looking for a 3 over 1, which remember is also 3 slope. With the coordinate given, oh, it's not going to let me switch colors. Ugh, this is x, this is y. So we're going to do y is negative 10 equals our slope of 3 times our x value plus our unknown y-intercept at this point, right? So I'm going to pause for a second, keep my mouth shut, and see if you guys can tell me what the new y-intercept is. So you're solving for b. So a big great divide. This is B. We got to get everything away from B and come up with a number. Is anybody coming up with anything to solve for B? How would I move that positive 3 that's over there with B right now to move it to the other side of the equal marks? Add it, subtract it, divide it, multiply it. What would you do? Yep, good job. So we're going to subtract 3, subtract 3. So it's getting negative 13 equals B. Now we have to be careful. So we need to make sure we hold on to this and hold on to this. That coordinate at this point means nothing. So we're going to do y equals 3x, because that's the opposite reciprocal. Yep, perfect. Minus 13. So that line is an equation perpendicular to the equation given and passing through 1, negative 10. Good job, guys. Really good job. All right. This is more of a vocabulary Ideally, hopefully, that we remember from our stats unit, which was pretty far away. But Marcus measured the height in inches of plants over the course of three weeks. The correlation coefficient, which is your R value when you do one bar stat, or even in the uh, when you get the linear regression of your data in Desmos, between the number of days x and the height of the plant is 0 .85, which could be concluded based on the correlation coefficient of this data. There is a strong relationship showing that the numbers of days increases, the height of the plant increases. So that means strong, positive. There's a strong relationship showing that as the number of days increases, the height of the plant decreases. So as number of days X increases, they're saying the height goes down. So that's going to be a negative line. So B is a strong negative relationship. And then C is a weak relationship showing that as the number of days increases, the height of the plants increase. So increase, increase is positive again. So it's a weak positive. And then last but not least, D is a weak relationship showing that the number of days increases, the height decreases. So that would be a negative. So our option for the first one would be um, strong positive. B is strong negative. C is weak positive, And D is weak negative. So if it's showing a 0.85 correlation coefficient, do you guys remember what that means? Is 0.85 strong or weak? Do we remember? Remember, it's all relative to a dollar. How close is it to one dollar? If it's super, yeah, it's strong. It's pretty strong. Yeah, not super strong, but strong, right? And then is that a positive or negative number? Positive. So that means it's a strong positive relationship. So then you would choose A. So again, and it goes from negative 1 to 0, whoops, to positive 1. And these are our positive relationships. This is our negative relationship. And it's all relative. If it's close to zero, it's weak. 
as it's either positive or negative, as it gets closer to one, it's strong. So I like to think about disregard the positive negative part and just decide how close to a dollar is it. And if it's close to a dollar, then it's strong. If it's not close to a dollar, it's weak. And then I decide, is it positive or negative, depending on the symbol in front of your correlation coefficient. Is how in my brain I keep them all separated. But either way, so correlation coefficient, if it's close to a dollar, strong. And then if it's negative, it's a negative. And if it's positive, it's positive. All right. The table below shows the hours X spent working on a new road and the distance Y of finished road. What is the slope of the line that fits this data? So each one goes up by 1.5 on the left, I mean, sorry, by um, 150 on the left side. So 50 to 200 is 150, 200, 300 is 150, and then it slowed down. 50 and then 250. So not consistent data. So this, you do want to probably use uh, Desmos and get a line of best fit. Um, let's see if I can do that without making a hot mess of our screen. Let's go here, be a hot mess of our screen. There we go. So we're going to go to our graphing calculator. You're going to go up here to the equals. We're going to add a table and we're just going to type in the numbers that are given 50, 200, 350, 400, 650. And you're going to go to Y, so 1.56. And I don't know about you, as soon as I saw decimals, even if it was something I could count out, I probably would still because my table's in decimals, but my answer choices are in fractions. So I would probably just come to Desmos anyway. Then you're going to go to your second line. And again, this is your Y, and you're going to go sub 1. Then we're going to use our squiggle mark, which is above the tab key. MX sub 1, and that sub 1, the part that goes in the basement, oops, this is an exclamation point, is what makes sure it knows to use the table that is above, the one that we are using, the one tables. So our R is 1, so that means it's strong linear, right? Very, very linear. And it's 0 0.03 is the slope, 0 0.03. So at that rate, we could do 3 divided by 400, which is 0.0075. 3 divided by 100, 0.03 is looking good. Just to make sure we don't make a silly mistake, 3 divided by 25 is 0.12. And then 3, which is obviously not our decimal. So our answer should be B. And I cannot reiterate enough how important it is to remember to use Desmos when you can because it is really easy and it'll give you a lot of answers and do all the things that, that you need it to do. And you do have access. It's embedded in your EOC in the calculator option of your EOC. Calculator active for sure. Okay. The total cost in dollars of a membership in a fitness center is given by the function C of M equals 35M plus 55, where M is the number of months a person is a member. In dollars, how much is the cost of a membership for one year? And we'll give you a minute to see if you can figure out. So how much does it cost for a one-year membership at this gym? With a function 35M plus 55. And M is my number of months.
So how many months is in a year? Yeah. So we don't want to put a one right here because this is in measures of months, but it does say years. So we have to convert it. So 35 times 12 plus 15. I'm sorry, plus 55. Wow. I don't know why I made up 15. Sorry. And what do we get? Yeah. So it's being $475 for the entire year membership. $475. What is the fee that they're not going to be able to get out of? Like looking at that function, what do you have to pay no matter what? What if you never show up, but you buy a membership? How much money will it cost you? you remember? Good. Yes. And how much does it cost you per month? Yes. Good. $35 per month. $55, that's that non-negotiable. As soon as you sign that contract, you have to pay $55, and then you're going to pay $35 every month. Good job, Logan and Tammy. You guys are awesome. I appreciate you chiming in with me, friends. All right. Jamie and Allison are both saving money for their vacation. The table below shows the models for the amount of money Jamie and Allison saved after X weeks. After how many weeks would Jamie and Allison have the same amount of money? Let's say in what X value would the Y value be the same for both of them? Because the X value is the amount of time and then your output would be how much money they have. Just discussing the functions before you get an answer to the question. Looking at Jamie's, did she put in a starting amount into her savings account? And if so, how much? What was Jamie's starting amount in her savings account? Oh, close. Jamie's the top one. So remember, starting amount is the same thing as our y-intercept, right? It's exactly where we're going to start, and then we're going to start tracking. So if I look at Jamie's, yes, good job, Emma. Good job. Yep, and then Logan, that's what I figured. Allison has no starting amount, right? Because there's not a y-intercept. So Allison has a zero y-intercept. Jamie has a $15. She started 15 How much money is Jamie adding to her account every, does it tell us, every week? Nope. The number attached to X is how much it changes. That's your slope, your rate of change, your M. The number without an X is that constant amount. You put the money in there and then dot, dot, dot happen to it, depending on what's in front of it and how it's laid out. But the number that does not have an X, is the non-negotiable fee. Yep. So in Jamie's, how much is she adding to her account every week? If X is the number of weeks. How much is Jamie adding to her account every week? I mean, her account's going to increase by how much per week? Yes, 10, because X is number of weeks, right? So if I was to write out Jamie's F of X equals 10X plus 15 in a sentence, like, you know, they give us a sentence and we have to write the equation. It would be Jamie deposited, or it could be, I guess it could change up a little bit. $15, then added $10 per week to her account. Because it's per week. That per it means it's your rate of change. It's going to increase by 10 every time she puts money in it. And then, so how much is Allison putting in per week? 15, right, because it's 15x. And again, Allison didn't put anything to start with. Hers is just going to go up by $15 per week. So we can set these equal to each other and solve them because that means when this side is equal to this, that means their outputs are the same because Y equals Y equals, and that would be substitution, if you remember, when we had systems of equations. Can anybody think of another way to find out when their Y values are going to be exactly the same with those two equations? And that might be kind of a vague question, but other than just setting them equal and solving them? It's two equations, so it's systems of equations, and we're looking for the solution. Mm, we don't want to multiply them together. So in my opinion, obviously 10x plus 15 equals 15x hopefully is not too scary to solve. This looks like a very good calculator inactive problem. Um, so before I show you the e my opinion easier way, if it was calculator active, I'm going to let you guys solve this real quick. 
So solve this for x. We definitely want to get our like terms together. So we're going to solve for x. And in this case, we want to get like terms together first. So what are we going to move first? We need our constants on one side and our variables on the other side. Yeah, the 10x would probably be the easiest thing to move. We subtract 10x from both sides. We end up with 15 equals 5x. 5x is what multiple what uh what operation? Multiplication, division, addition, or subtraction. 5x. Yep, divide by 5. Why did I divide, Timmy? You're absolutely right. I'm just wondering why. Why did you choose divide? Yes, inverse of multiplication. Good, because 5x is 5 times x. They're two different things that is absolutely like an operation is happening. And again, that's just me trying to help you out for your future math classes to realize 5x is not one thing. 5 is 1 and x is 1. We're just multiplying them together. So x equals 3. But your other option is 10x plus 15 and x, 15x is to go to... Desmos, get rid of all our other stuff, and you're going to put in your 10x plus 15, and you're going to put in 15x, and then we're going to look for where they intersect. So when are they equal to each other? So we're going to go up here, somewhere, somewhere, there it is, 3, right? So the x value is 3. How much money did they both have in their account, if I'm looking at that right there? At three weeks, how much money did they both have in their account? Yeah, 45, exactly. Yep. And if you didn't do it on the graph and see where they intersect, you can plug your 3 in. So 10 times 3 is 30, plus 15 is 45. And then 15 times 3 is also 45. So again, if your calculator inactive, you could plug that in and answer the same question. But our answer to this question would obviously be B because it's at three weeks, right? Right. The value V of a car can be modeled by the function V of X equals 15,495 times 0.87 raised to the T, where T is the number of years since the car was purchased. To so the nearest tenth of a percent, what is the monthly rate of depreciation? So this is an exponential function. Depreciation means it's going to be a decay, so not growth. Also, remember this is all based of A1 plus or minus the rate of change as a decimal raised to the amount of time we're tracking it. So everything is relative to a dollar. So what is the depreciation rate that's illustrated in this equation. So how close or far from a dollar are we inside those parentheses? All right, so if we had, so 15, four, nine, five goes right here, and then 0.87 is in here times T. So relative to a dollar, how did I end up at 87 cents? Did I add money to a dollar? Did I take money away from a dollar? How much did I add or take away from a dollar? So how many pennies do I need to add to 87 cents to get to a dollar? Right, 13. So it's 13 cents, like 0.13 away from a dollar. It says to give it as a percentage, so we're going to multiply that by 100 or move the decimal 2 to the right. So it's a 13% depreciation rate. Yep, 0.13, exactly, Logan. Good job. Good job, Emma. So 13, but then it says as a percent. So we got to switch it back to a percentage because remember, inside the parentheses is as a decimal. Again, relative to $1, which is 1.00, which is the same thing as 100%. All right. 
Okay, I'm going to be real quiet and let y'all try this one. This is going to be a calculator inactive. So I challenge you not to use your calculator, but try to solve this bad boy, please. You might come up with an answer or you're stuck. How are we doing? So hopefully we distributed the two first. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times a negative 4 is going to be a negative 8. Good. Good. Now, multiplying by 1 half is the same thing as dividing by 2. So multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. So 1 half of $10 is how much? Mm-hmm. 5x. Good. And then 1 half... Of a negative 36. Now, if you can't do that without a calculator, maybe 30 is easier. Half of 30 is what? Right, and then half of 6 is what? And if I put those together, that means I have a negative 18. And that's just a way to, like 30 is a little, yeah, a little easier. And then do the 6 part and then add those two together. So now I'm going to let you keep going to see if you can solve it from here. Oh, this bad boy looks ugly. Hmm. So I'm going to subtract 2x. How do I move that 18x over there with that negative 8? Mm-hmm. So add 18, add 18, gives me 10 equals 3x. Divide by 3. Right. This is an ugly one. So x equals, it's 3 and 1 third. We'll just leave it as 10 thirds. Because 3 times 3 is 9, which leaves me 1 left over to get to 10. As a decimal, that would be 3.33 repeating. But 10 over 3 is fine for right now. Not a nice, neat, pretty guy. But we're in high school, so it happens.
All right, we've done one of these already in our, our packets. Um, so find, this is your function notation. So that eight right here, is that an X or a Y value? Who's sit, yeah. I was gonna say, whose seat is eight sitting in? So if we're thinking about F of X, we replace the X with an eight. So we're gonna do 16 plus one half times eight equals Y. So what's Y equal? What's half of eight? Yep. Yep. And then if we add that to 16, Ooh, be easy. Count it one more time. 16 plus 4. Yeah, good, good, good. 20. So y equals 20. So that f of 8, so that means the coordinate would be when x is 8, y is 20. That f of 8 is asking what is y when x is 8 in that previous function. And then so the second part says find x such that f of x equals 10. So since it says f of x equals 10, is that 10 a y value or an x value? Good. Because remember, f of x is the same thing as y. So just like that, y equals 10. So what that's saying is what is x when y equals 10? So we're going to take our same equation, put our 10 on the outside, and then solve it. We want to get x by itself, so what are we going to move first, and how are we going to move it? Yes, 16, how are we going to move it? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? Yes, subtract, perfect. So subtract 16 from both sides. If I have $10 and I spend 16, what do I have left over, or where am I sitting? What's 10 plus a negative 16? Is it a positive 6 or a negative 6? Good, negative 6. Yep, yep, yep. You had 10, you spent too much. So negative 6. Now, 1 half x, that means there's a 2 in the basement or in the denominator. The reciprocal is to multiply by 2, right? Because then that would mean I would get rid of that 1 half. So if I multiply both sides by 2, I'll get rid of that 1 half because that actually leaves me a 2 over 2, which is 1. So what does x equal when y is 10? What's a negative 6 times 2? Yep, negative 12. Good. So the other way to think about it, because some of us are better like logic learners. So 1 half of what gives me negative 6? So what did I split in half to end up with a negative 6? Yeah. Yeah, Timmy, it makes sense because 1 half is dividing, but you're not dividing a 6. You're dividing something else to get out a 6, if that makes sense maybe, or a little bit, because that's that x is saying, what number did I have to get a negative 6 as my output? So in this case, when x is a negative 12, y is 10. All right, domain of the function. You give these answer choices some look looksies and see which one you pick, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Domain. Is domain x values or y values? Yes, good. So what two answers could I cross out to make sure I don't accidentally make an oops? Just looking at my answer choice. If I know domain's x, which two can I get rid of? Yeah, two and four. Go on. Don't pick one of those. Right? Now, if you know domain is x, is negative 1 to positive 6 on the x-axis that we're looking at, or negative 2 to positive 5? Is 
So his domain is x, which is left and right. So how far left did this graph go, and then how far right did this graph go? So it stopped right here, and it stopped right here on our x-axis, right? So how far left is that on the x-axis, and how far right is that on the x-axis? To the right, six, right? And then how many to the left? Based off the origin. That negative one, right? So it went to the left. So again, if domain is x values, so we're just reading the x axis. How far to the left did it go? And that's that negative one right there, right? And then how far to the right did it go? And that's right there. And that's at that six. So it went from negative one to six. So our answer is number one. Number three is your boo-boo answer because that is range because that is your Y values. How far down did it go? And there's that negative two all the way up to one, two, three, four. And there's my five. Like it went all the way up to five. So range is your y values, but actually I guess this is your range y values. The x messes it up. Number four is actually the correct range. But the negative two and five, their misconception that they're assuming you're going to do is look up and down. Domain, you want to look straight across the x-axis. How far over to the left? What is the least value of x that I can use for this function? And then what is the greatest value of x I can use for the function? And then for range, what's the highest number it hits on the y-axis? And what's the lowest number it hits on the y-axis? for a range. All right. What is the range of this data? So looking at these numbers on this chart, range, remember again, like you just said, domain is X. So range is going to be Y. Range is your Y value. Domain is up and down. So we know that do, uh, range is going to, I'm sorry, domain is left and right. So we know that range is going to be up and down. So what's the lowest number it uses on the y-axis and what is the highest number it uses on the y-axis? Thirty and eighty, good, because you're looking remember this is your y-axis, and the smallest number would be right here, farthest down, and then the furthest up. So you thirty and eighty. So is our answer choice three or four the correct answer? Three, good. Why is four bad? Why is number four not right? Yeah, because that's an X. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Good job. And then your zero to 24, again, X. Yep, X is domain. And then, so in this case, that zero, yep, same for number two. Exactly. You could cross that out too. If all you remember back to, again, like all you can remember is range is Y. Get rid of the two X's because now you have a 50-50 shot at getting the right answer. Um, the 0 and 24 number choices is your domain because it went from 0 to 24 on the graph on the x-axis. That's why they gave you those because they're assuming you don't know the difference between the domain and range for that guy. All right, good old box and whisker plots. Colin caught 15 fish in each of the two ponds on his ranch. The box and whisker plots summarize the lengths and inches of the fish from each pond. The lengths of the fish from Willow Pond have a greater range so willow pine is the bottom one so we're comparing this one to the one above it greater range than the length of those from taylor pine so the range remember is max minus min what is the max number from taylor pine Twenty, right? What's the minimum from Taylor's Pond? Yep, so twenty minus five means our range is fifteen. So Willow's Pond, what is the this is Taylor's Pond, so Willow's Pond, what's the max for Willow's Pond? Eighteen? Yep. And then my min minus five, yep, equals thirteen. So which one has the bigger range? Taylor or Willow? Taylor, right. So Willow Pond does not have a greater range than Taylor Pond. So A's out. 
median equals 12. Willard Pond's median equals 12. What is the median of Willard Pond? Yep, median, remember, is the middle. So that's at 11. So B's out, that's a no-go. The mean is equal to 20 inches. So you can't find the mean. There's not enough information from a box and whisker to discuss mean ever. Like you can't talk about mean from the information a box and whisker plot, plot because you need you can guess about where it is relative to its distribution, but to give an accurate mean wouldn't work. Not to mention the fact mean equal to 20 inches. That's the largest number on Willow's Pond and Taylor's Pond. So the largest number is never going to be your mean. That's going to be your max, right? So last but not least, the lower quartile is equal to the lower quartile of Taylor's Pond. What is the lower quartile of those two ponds? Value. Do you remember what lower quartile is? So that's at Q1. So this is our lower quartile. This is our upper quartile. The difference in those is your IQR. Yeah, it looks like it might be nine. But I think you have the general right idea, Emma. So from five, and then we count in six, seven, eight, nine is Willow, and five, six, seven, eight, nine is Taylor. But either way, they're both in the same place. So our best answer is going to be D. Our best answer is going to be D. Good, 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 good. Awesome. All right, another growth and decay. The population of Barnard, Bernardsville <laughs> in 2014 was estimated to be 24,000 people with an annual rate of increase, which means it's growth, of about 2.4%. Which function would give you the estimated total population, Y, at Bernardsville in 2021? If you guys are looking at that, which one, first of all, do we use 2.4 as a percent or what is that number when we convert it to a decimal? What's 2.4% turned into a decimal? So remember to change a decimal. Yeah, oh, so close, Logan. You moved it one time to the left. You want to move it two times to the left. So 2.4% as a decimal. You got to move it one more time. Yes, good job, Emma. So 0.024 as a decimal. So then you want to look at those choices, and it says growth. So you want to make sure it's addition. All of those choices are addition, so that's not a problem. So which answer choice is the right answer? Good. And do we know why it has a 7 up there instead of a 21 in the time? So from 2014 to 2021, how many years passed? How many years from 2014 to 2021? Good job. So that's why it's a C up at the top. So D, the 0.24, because again, so 0.24 as a percent. To change it to the decimal, we got to move it twice. That gets that zero in the front, 0.024 as a decimal. And then the seven is because we're doing it from 2014 to 2021. And that's not 21 years. If we did it from 2000 to 2021, 
then that 21 up in the T spot would work perfectly, but we didn't. 